Hey everyone, Sully Man, uh, bringing you a new tutorial today. But first, I want to take a moment out to thank you guys for uh, watching, liking, sharing, and commenting. You know all the thank yous in the comment section. The subscriber base has been jumping up pretty drastic as of late, so I guess I'm doing something right. And uh, just wanted to take the time to thank you guys. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so with the spray tool, what I did is uh, you'll notice it actually over here. If you click and hold the spray tool. Uh, you'll see all the sub tools and then this arrow to the right. Any, pretty much any of these that have um, extra sub tools, you can drag them out. If you click that arrow, as you can see, um, you know you can kind of style it to your preference and move it over here. I like to have it. I keep it out all the time. Um, I use it a lot, so I have all the sub tools and I don't have to click and wait and you know it just kind of drags you. You lose time doing that, so it's just for efficiency and workflow. Um, so let's get started. Um, I started earlier. What I did, I sketched out a skull. Um, I did that using the brush and some custom brushes. This uh, soft one here set to a small stroke. Um, with this uh, skull, I'm actually using a Wacom tablet. It's uh, pressure sensitive and I can kind of draw, not on screen, it's away from screen once you get used to it, but I definitely suggest you guys, uh, if you don't have one and you plan on doing some illustration, definitely purchase one and get used to it and uh, practice as much as you can so you can start doing that type of stuff. Uh, the second layer is basically the same technique using the brush and some of these custom brushes I made and I went in and inked it in. Uh, so now what I want to do is basically I'm going to do a stipple effect and I'm going to do that using the spray tool. So what you want to do is first understand what it is that you want to do. And obviously I'm doing this stipple. So I have some stipple brush stuff set up and basically what the sprayer tool does is you can grab symbols. And symbols are super powerful. I'll get into those in a later tutorial. Uh, but it, it, basically what you're doing is you're creating you know whatever graphic that you want to kind of spray around so you can see here I've got some of these set up already I'm gonna run you through really fast I'm basically going to do a single stipple and you can see that it's just it's just a circle um, so what I want to do and keep in mind is when I zoom into this skull I want to kind of size my stipple so I'm gonna create a new layer I'm gonna lock this just so I don't mess with it but basically, I'm just grabbing the circle tool. I'm going to click and drag out and, you know, drag it to the size. I want it to be a fill. We can always edit it later, so, so don't worry about it too much. But let me zoom out. Let's see. That's a pretty big stipple dot. So let me drag it in just a bit. So say that's the size stipple I want. What I would do is grab that, have my symbol panel open, click and drag. I can name it dot. You can keep it a movie clip graphic. I find that it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you can leave all this default. So I'm going to hit cancel because I already have it. So we'll just pretend that this single stipple is the one that we just created. So we've got that sized out. And what I'm going to do now is with uh, my Wacom tablet stylus, I'm going to go ahead and click on the sprayer tool. You can do it over here as well. And what I'm going to do is just kind of start painting it in. Well, well I got the wrong one set, but you can see what's going to happen. So let me grab the single stipple. And I'm going to start painting this in. Now you're going to notice, see how slow this is? Basically what the, the settings set to this right now are fixed and the density and intensity are pretty low. So what we're going to do is double click on the tool we can set the int intensity. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of knock it up to 10 for now. Um, we can set pressure, you know, pressure sensitivity. And this, again, you have to have a Wacom tablet. Um, you can have a pressure stylus wheel, tilting of the stylus, the bearing, the rotation, all that stuff. I'm going to leave it fixed for now, just in case you guys are just kind of clicking around with a mouse. You can still do it. So let's go ahead and hit OK. I just kind of bumped up the uh, density and, and intensity. So I'm going to kind of start brushing this stuff in just to kind of show you. So you can see over here it's pretty thick. So I know in the areas that I want it real thick, like in this dark area, I'm just going to really cover that a lot so you can see it's starting to fill it in. And essentially what sibling is doing, it's kind of like halftones if you're you know, doing a t-shirt printing. You're, you're essentially just using halftones to create the blends. Um, your eye, you know, from a certain distance will blur them and give it that nice you know, smooth tone. 
So as you can see, now out here, you know, I don't want it too dark. So, you know, around these edges I probably will. So I'll just kind of work that in. But you can see, so in these certain areas, I don't want it super heavy and dark. You know, because I'm in my mind the light is coming from the top left. So, you know, in these gaps between the teeth, it'll probably be dark. So I'll knock some of that stuff in there. Down here, where this form kind of turns down. Make it pretty dark in there. As this uh, cheekbone rolls around, back, this back side of it over here, catch it. So, now, I've noticed I need a little bit more, so let's go ahead and bump it up. I'm going to bump it up to 20. You don't have to keep them the same. You can kind of play around with the settings. Um, and then let me show you real quickly what uh, the pressure sensitivity does. So you can see I'm really lightly pressing. So we're back to like that initial set. But when I start pushing really hard, you can see it activates it and kind of gets it going. So let's go. So And also, you can see the intensity kind of gets knocked off. So... Um, let's see what 50 will do here. So I'm just going to basically continue shading in the areas that I feel that this might need. And at the same time, it really adds an awesome look and texture to it. So. That and so that's pressure sensitivity. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off. Head to fixed. Let's do one, two, five. Oh, so I guess ten maxed out. I didn't even realize that. I'm even learning something in my own tutorials. So let's go ahead and keep cranking away at this. So I think that looks pretty good for now. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, another one of my symbols. I'm gonna, this is a uh, kind of smaller stipple that's grouped together. You'll see it comes in patches. So that's how dynamic this stuff is. It's just super cool and super custom at the same time. And you can really get some awesome, awesome textures out of this stuff too. So I'm just kind of adding this in the uh, nice dark areas. Get some stuff in the nose there. So you can see it's like a spray can. You know, it looks like it's, you know, spray brushed this uh, stipple dot kind of look. So now you're probably thinking, what the heck am I going to do on the outside over here? So I'm going to show you a technique uh, of masking. And again, this will be something I'll highlight in a separate, uh, probably quicker video. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get this cookie cutter mask set up. So what I'm going to basically do here is I'm, I just duplicated the line art layer because it essentially has a nice contour that I'm going to use to punch out and uh, keep specific stuff in my um, sprayer tool um, artwork. So I'm going to go ahead and expand this artwork. I did it with the hotkey, but you can go to Object Expand. You can see the hotkey I, I have listed there. Once I have that expanded, I'm going to merge, and then unify, or unite. Um, now I have one nice solid shape. I'm going to go ahead and make that white. Because in a mask, which I'll show you, I'm going to delete this layer now. I'm going to unlock my stipple art layer that I made with the uh, spray tool. I'm going to go into the transparency panel here, expand it out, and you can see that I can make a mask. Now you'll see, notice the thumbnail. It gives you kind of the thumbnail of the sprayer cool art right there. I'm going to go ahead and hit mask. And now what you're going to see is this thumbnail is now activated and it's completely black. So on default, a mask is going to delete everything that you see there. And it deletes with black and it adds with white. So anything with any sort of percentage, if you're using opacities of white, you can um, essentially work it like an opacity in, in an object. So I'm using complete 100% white, so I, that'll show 100% of the artwork. I copied the, um, or I actually cut the artwork um, 
from the contour that I made with the skull. And then I can go to Edit, Paste, and Place. Whoops. Make sure you click the mask first before you do that. And Object, I mean Edit, Paste, and Place. And what it does is you can see in the thumbnail, it pasted in place exactly where that skull is. Everything white, which is inside the skull, stays because it's white. Remember, the white in a mask keeps white while the black erases. So it erased all that other garbage on the outside that we didn't need. So I'm going to click back into the artwork, and it's good to go. So I can now, I'm just going to go ahead and group these guys. So I have one nice piece. I'm going to delete this layer. And uh, now we have this pretty awesome skull. I'm going to hit the uh, background off, and you can see it keeps transparency and everything. So now another cool thing um, is we're going to go ahead I'll create another little um, symbol with you. And we'll, we'll kind of, you know, not stipple, but we'll go ahead and spray in uh, and make some kind of vintage text as well. So I did a uh, Google search earlier. I Googled the phrase rolled ink and this is what showed up it's just basically somebody grabbed a roller that had some ink on it ran it across a piece of paper and scanned it into the computer i'm going to go ahead and copy that texture um, you can use people other people's stuff through a google search as long as it's hev heavily modified to where it's not even at all the original artwork um, I, we're not doing that today um, i highly suggest to create your own texture scan it in and uh, then go ahead and use that all you want this is just for the sake of the tutorial that I'm using this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this skull layer. I'm going to paste that um, copy that I did from the uh, Google search. So here's the artwork. I'm going to use an, uh, a plugin, and I am not affiliated with Astute uh, Graphics, but I am in love with their plugins. Um, if you guys are intermediate to advanced users doing anything in t-shirts or any sort of thing like that, I highly suggest to make a purchase. There, it's It's absolutely wonderful stuff. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit, hit uh, the shortcut to activate one of their plugins. You can see it, Phantasm Levels. Uh, Google Phantasm, it's super powerful, an amazing product. Um, and again, I'm not affiliated with them, just love the stuff. You know, if it's, if it's quality work, I have no problem, you know, giving my stamp of approval. So what I'm doing is just basically levels like in Photoshop. So I'm boosting the blacks, boosting the whites to kind of... Um, knock some stuff out and add some stuff in. So I like that right there. And I'm basically just getting this uh, JPEG image set up to live trace. So I'm going to hit image trace to get the live trace going. So you can see with the default, it's it's absolutely awful. I'm not a huge fan of live trace, uh, as, but there, there's some techniques to, to get some great results. So what I'm going to do first off is I'm going to turn off the live preview. So I don't want it because it can bog the system down and just take forever. So I'm going to go ahead and boost the threshold to about 165. I want 100% paths, 100% corners, and I don't want to deduce noise. That's kind of what, from 1 to 100, uh, noise reduction would be 100% versus none. So I'm going to leave noise to uh, 1. Uh, I'm going to take snap, to cur snap curves to lines because it just kind of gives these sharp edges and stuff. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. And I will knock out the white. So I'm going to turn the background off. You can see the image has a white background. When I hit ignore white, it'll actually ignore that. That will be transparent and only focus on the black. So you can see down here, this is what's kind of going on. It's it's going to um, only use two colors, which would be the black and white. There were some tones of gray, but when the colors are set to two, it's only focusing on two. It's only going to pick two of the most apparent uh, colors in the artwork and use those. So I'm going to hit preview to kind of see what the result will be. And that looks pretty darn close to the original. It's not too jaggedy and sharp and live trace looking. So I'm going to hit expand to accept, which it basically expands the artwork. I'm going to turn the background back on. And that's Control shift d That's the shortcut to turn that off and on if you want to toggle it to kind of see what's going on. So now with this, you can see once I click, everything's grouped. I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut key, uh, Control shift g to ungroup. Uh, and I'm just going to find a section that I like. Um, let's see here. I am going to go... I'm going to go right here. I kind of like this stuff right here. Except that right there. I want this... It almost looks like a nice little circle. So I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. Turn the visibility off of that layer. I'm going to paste that in. I'm going to group them. So I have them nice and grouped. And what I'm going to do is, with my symbol panel, I'm going to expand that. I'm going to drag and drop. And we'll call this rolled ink. 
We'll call it two since I already have another roll dink in here, so I'm gonna hit okay. So remember, you with this blotcha artwork, you can go in and set up a whole bunch of these different symbols to kind of mix and, and match as you go. So let's uh, let's grab some text here. I'm gonna turn this the visibility of this layer on. I'm gonna put um, let's just write awesome. So with this, I want to keep in mind this isn't gonna work too well with a thin font. So um, I was working this earlier, so I kind of left it there. So it's Futura. Um, it's a thick, um, oblique styled font. Oblique just kind of out italicizes, puts a slant to it, you know, slightly. So this is nice and thick. Um, and what I'm going to do is basically I want that stipple effect to kind of knock out within the center of this. But towards the edge, I want to keep um, its solidness. So what I'm going to do is basically with this text, I'm going to go ahead and uh, expand. Or you can go to type, and uh, where is it at here? Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Create outlines. Sometimes it's uh, when I haven't used it in so long, I forget where it is. But create out, create outlines, and remember, you can find all the shortcuts to this stuff. Which again, like I said in my uh, power training videos, get to know them well. So I expanded it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the pa uh, object and then path, and I'm going to offset the path. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do point 0.2, let's see what that does, and you can see it adds that, uh, what it did is it um, offset in a negative degree, so it shrunk on the inside, and I kind of like that, that default, point zero 0.02 inches. Uh, you can play around with it if you want more, like hit the 5, hit, you know, toggle the preview again, or just click into another option box. Let's do 3, see what that looks like. That's pretty good, you know what, I'm actually going to keep that, so I'll hit OK. So with the offset applied, I'm just going to automatically, because once you uh, set the offset and you accept it, um, it keeps that as a selection. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, turn that white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab both. Now, what you'll notice, I'm just going to, let's grab this white real quick. Actually, let's just select it all. I'm going to cut it out so you can see what's behind it. It's actually the original text. So when you do the offset, it actually adds in new objects. It's not deleting or clipping or cutting from. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, paste that back in. Get out of isolation mode. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually merge them. So I'm going to hit merge. And now it's really going to cut it out. So I'll show you that. I'm going to turn the background um, off. And I'm going to go ahead and select all the white with my magic wand. I'm going to cut it out. And you can see it actually cut it out. So that's good. I want to keep that black. I don't want to play with that at all. So I'm going to turn the background back on. Now I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to paste the white in. So with that color change, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to copy it again. So now I'm going to use the mask technique again. So let's head over to our transparency panel. Um, let's go ahead and make a mask. So remember, it's going to knock it out. And this is something I want to show you. You can see in the thumbnail that the E is missing. And the reason why is it wasn't grouped. So I'm going to hit undo. I'm going to select all, make sure it's grouped. And you can see that mask thumbnail pop up. Now when I hit mask, you can see it's including everything. So I'm going to click into the mask. I'm going to paste into place, edit, paste into place. It pasted. You don't see anything, though, because we didn't make it white. So let's go ahead and hit white. And now that shows up. So I'm going to back out to the artwork. That part's done. And now what we can do is start adding our stipple effect. So, um, or not stipple effect, but we're doing the roll date this time. So uh, I'm going to drop this transparency panel out for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and grab them both and knock them down to about 50%. So there, there's some transparency there. I'm going to lock them because we can change that layer. I just want to be able to see what we're doing uh, as we move along with the sprayer tool. So let's grab our sprayer tool. So with our rolled ink here, we can knock that in. You can see I, it's too much. So I'm going to go ahead and change the settings. I'm going to knock that down to about 5. And let's go ahead and start knocking that in here and there. So now I'm going to head over to my symbols, make sure I have that nice rolled ink texture set. I'm going to grab my spray tool. 
Um, and now we're just going to kind of start lightly punching this stuff in here. In the areas we think we might need it. So we can overdo it. And with the spray tool, there's all sorts of options. So um, we have got a scruncher tool to where we can start pushing stuff in. So you can literally scrunch them into the area. Um, if you hold the Alt key, you can push them away from that area if you want. So we'll scrunch these back in. Um, this right here is kind of like the warp tool. You can kind of push them around, change directions. So you can really kind of get pretty custom with this. Pushing them around, so that's pretty good. Uh, we can change uh, size as well. Um, this is the sizer tool. You can see if I just hold down default, it makes it huge. I don't want that. I'm going to hit undo. But what I can do here is start to shrink by holding all some of these areas. So that's kind of cool. Actually, let's make that a little bigger. Let's get back to our scruncher tool. Push that in a little bit more. So I'm pretty happy with that result. Um, I'm going to click off, click on. And now what I can do is just cut that. And remember, in our mask, black's going to knock out. That's exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to go back to these two pieces. I'm going to highlight them. Let's knock them back up to 100%. Um, now I only want to work with the inner one, so I just locked the outer one. I'm going to go into the mask, and I'm just going to hit Control F. Control B, I believe, would be behind, which I don't want to do. Um, but I'm going to hit Control F, and it'll paste in front and in place as well. And you can see, it's kind of added that nice little texture. I can click out, and uh, we got a pretty, pretty uh, cool vintage little, you know, rolled ink kind of text. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Let's group these guys together. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these these layers that I don't need. And now we have a pretty awesome skull. <laughs> so I hope you guys learned something from this today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, if, uh, if you guys are interested in having this skull artwork. Um, to kind of play around with. I'm going to go ahead and throw it up on cells. Um, uh, this time I'm actually going to throw it up for like two bucks. Um, it'll help support uh, my goal of getting some better audio equipment so you guys aren't hearing uh, my computer fan in the background. Um, you know, it'll just be higher quality. So if you want to help support the channel and, and what I'm doing, uh, go ahead and head over to that cell store. I'll have the link down in the description. And, uh, you know, it's only a couple bucks, but it's, think of it like a donut or a coffee or something like that. And, uh, help support the channel so again thank you guys for watching uh, keep up with the uh, commenting and uh, always love hearing the, uh, the good feedback and even the bad feedback um, remember to like sh uh, share and comment and uh, and again thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks sometimes you'll, you'll want to be urged to um, uh, like on this style just use a